Happy Friday, friends. Welcome back to A Daily Walk Devotions. If you're watching this in the morning, can I say to you, good morning. Uh, If you're watching it later on, hello. Glad to have you here. And uh, so great to hear from you. Encourage you to take these devotionals, share them with somebody else, pass them along. Uh, Maybe somebody will be encouraged. That's our prayer anyway. Well, this weekend, we have our church at the outlets. If you have never been, if you're in the Southern California area, we take our entire church, all three services, out to a massive parking lot right here at the outlets in San Clemente. It's a wonderful opportunity. We like to say the church has left the building. We go out. It's You can see this massive gathering of thousands of people. And you bring your own lawn chair, you bring your own umbrella, and you bring a friend who needs to know Jesus. We present the gospel, we worship, we give people an opportunity to respond. It is something that is is really a highlight for our church and a great way to be a witness to all of those people around us in this community, and we praise God for it. Hope you can join us. It's at 10 a.m. this weekend, Sunday, at the outlets there in San Clemente. Well, let's get back into the book of James, and we're looking at faith that is active. And James has been looking at several examples told us what not to do and also what to do. He looked at Abraham as the father of faith and pointed out that Abraham believed in God. It was counted unto him righteousness. And then Abraham also acted on that faith. That belief in God carried over into the way that he lived. Well, he now cites a second Old Testament example who had faith and works go together. And that is a woman by the name of Rahab. Notice here in verse 25, of chapter 2. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James looks at yet another Old Testament example, this time a woman who was a prostitute. That's what the word harlot means. And she was living in the city of Jericho. By this time, the former generation had already died off. Only two remained from the nation of Israel. It was of the former generation. It was Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua was called to lead the people across the Jordan into the promised land of Canaan. And after they had come across to the other side, there was a night when Joshua went out and he began to observe the area of Jericho. This would be the first battle that they would face. And and the walls of Jericho were overwhelming. They seemed insurmountable. And Joshua wondering, how could he ever take that city? There was no way to get in or come out. I mean, they were secure inside. It seemed impenetrable, this fortress. And of course, on that particular night, Joshua was confronted by what many believe, and I would be included in this, a Christophanes. Jesus in the Old Testament revealing himself to Joshua as the commander of the army of the Lord of hosts. And Joshua fell down on his face and he worshipped. And again, we believe that this was Jesus in the Old Testament. And of course, it seems that from that meeting that Joshua was given instruction as to how to take Jericho. And so he came and he decided, first of all, to send two spies to go in and do some recon, find out how to get into the city. Somehow, two spies made their way in and the first place that they stopped was a home of a woman whose name was Rahab. I guess this was the place to hide out. It wasn't uncommon for men to go into her home. And so that's where they went first. But when they met Rahab, They had come to find out that she had heard about them. She had heard about the nation of Israel and she informed them that everybody within the city was afraid and no one wanted to fight against them. And there were men that apparently had seen these two spies come in and so she hid them on her roof and they came in and questioned her about the two men that came in and she told them they're not here. They went out another way and so they left. And then Rahab asked these two spies that when they came in and took the city, that they would protect her and her family. And the two spies said, listen, the one way that we're going to protect your family is if you take a scarlet thread, a scarlet rope, as it were, and you hang it outside, a piece of cloth outside your window. And when we see that scarlet cloth outside, anybody inside with you will be spared. If you don't put that out there, then your life is in your own hands. So, Rahab receives this word 
She sends the spies on their way. They go back and tell Joshua what happened. Meanwhile, what does Rahab do? Well, she believed what they said. And she took that scarlet piece of linen and she hung it outside the window so that she would be protected. The point is this. Her faith was demonstrated by her actions. She believed what they said, and it was evident by what she did. It wasn't long after that that Joshua rallied the people, and they began to march around the city of Jericho day after day, not making a sound. I wonder what it was like for those inside the city to look over the wall and observe these people walking around with the Ark of the Covenant and thinking, what are they doing? some kind of psychological warfare. Joshua was doing exactly what the Lord told him to do. But then there came the day when the Lord said, all right, when you march around the city seven times on this day, I want you to blow the trumpets. And guess what's going to happen? The walls of the city are going to fall. <laughs> you talk about faith. I mean, Joshua also was demonstrating his faith, walking around. Me, believe God. I mean, have you ever just, uh, th listen, imagine that for a battle strategy. Listen, we're going to walk around the wall, don't say anything. And then when finally, just blow the trumpet. Well, what's going to happen, Joshua? The walls are going to come down. Well, that's never happened before. They would have to trust God that that was going to happen. They had to demonstrate their faith by their actions. And sure enough, they marched around that city seven times. And then they said, all right, hit it. They didn't say hit it. And then they blew the trumpets. And the walls came tumbling down. They went into the city. And when they came to the home of Rahab, they saw that scarlet piece of of cloth hanging outside her window, and she was spared. Her faith was active. If she didn't believe what they said, she would have demonstrated it by not putting that cloth out there. But because she believed, her faith was active. You know, it's pretty powerful to see that scarlet thread being put out there. It reminds me of the work of Christ in the sense that his blood was shed for me and because of that, my sins are forgiven. My sins are removed. And by faith, I trust that the only way that I can be delivered from destruction that sin brings is by trusting in the blood of Jesus that was shed for me. And by faith, acting upon that. And by God's grace and his mercy, I've been saved. Such was the case with Rahab. But you know, that's not the end of the story for Rahab. What is so wonderful to behold is that because she took that step, did you know that in the genealogy that led to Jesus the Messiah, there's several names found there. You know one of which was found? A prostitute, a former harlot by the name of Rahab was included in the genealogy that pointed to Jesus Christ. Oh, if she hadn't have put that scarlet thread out, she would have missed it. Folks, listen, when you trust in Christ, your faith is active. It will be demonstrated by the life that you live. People will see it. And who knows what God will do. Is God asking you to take some step of faith today? Can I encourage you? Do it. Do it now. If you hear the Lord speaking, step out and watch what God will do. We'll see you on Monday. God bless.